What really makes this one special is on the B pillar. This logo here, four wheel steer. Hey, Steve Mignon here doing the junkyard crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking in Bernardstown, Massachusetts with a 1989 Honda Prelude. Now the Prelude was built between 1978 and 2001 in five generations. And it was Honda's effort to take on the Volkswagen Scirocco, which was kind of a sporty front wheel drive car that came along in the mid seventies and became a big part of the picture. So again, Honda wanted to take on Scirocco. And again, these were front wheel drive cars, very popular. Now this is a third generation car. These were built between 1989 or 88 in 1991. This one is a 1989. Now the thing about these that I love is how these have a very slender greenhouse. The A pillars are very svelte. The B pillar is nicely hidden by this blacked out effect. And the C pillar is actually thin and uh, almost BMW-ish right here. And again, it's a rollover capable car. It would meet any uh, legislation of the day thanks to this thick pillar right here. But again, it kind of hid in plain sight. I love how the nose of these things tapers down. These have a 0.34 coefficient of drag, which is right there with the Porsche 944 of the day. And a lot of that was thanks to how Honda tilted the engine in the engine bay. Let's have a peek here. And we can see that that's the uh, two liter dual overhead cam for 135 horsepower, but it's laid back 18 degrees toward the firewall, which reduces the overall height to allow for the lower cowl and hood line in this beautiful sort of razor sharp snout. And of course, like most preludes in the generations, the early ones, hideaway headlights, standard equipment. But again, this is the dual overhead cam, two liter four. And you gotta love the mini Hemi vibe you got right here. These spark plug tubes go way down inside. Not quite like a 426 Hemi, but the, the idea is there. Of course, there's a cam on each side. Uh, no rocker arms, no push rods here, of course. This is dual overhead cam architecture. But again, 135 horsepower. But what really makes this one special is on the B pillar. This logo here, four wheel steer. Now the thing is, four wheel steer is something that was seen first in mass production on this car right here. The whole point of it was that the rear wheels would steer f as much as five degrees opposite the front tires in slow speed maneuvering to reduce the turning circle by 10%. Meanwhile, at higher speeds, you would get 1.5 degrees of turn at the back in the same direction as the front tires, which would then uh, reduce the yaw factor, the tail wag on wet surfaces and higher speeds. Now, the thing is that four wheel steel system was activated when the steering wheel was turned anything more, I believe, than 240 degrees. And again, at low speeds, it was all about around town maneuverability, but on a high speed, on the highway, over 50 or so, you know, your steering wheel might be turning five or 10 degrees at the most. And that's when it went into a 1.5 degree rear wheel steer, same direction as the fronts to reduce the yaw factor. But the steering wheel here has the uh, all wheel steer logo in the horn button. This one is a five-speed manual. It was also a four-speed automatic possible. The 140 mile an hour speedometer, I would say it's a little bit optimistic, but these things had such good aerodynamics. And even with 135 horsepower, I'd say 120 would not be out of the question. But just a beautiful interior on these things. I'll come around to the other side and we'll look at the features. Beautiful buckets in these things. And I love how the dashboard comes down really low like this. We can see here where it's kind of a shelf and uh, the glove. Ooh, look at this, a nice little mouse factory right here. That's cool, good to see right there. But uh, again, five-speed manual, nice tight gate on this here. And in the back, it's kind of cool. Uh, room for two, maybe three in a pinch, but we have passage through to the trunk. So if you had a set of skis or, you know, something really long, a coffin, something like that, you pop it right in and you'd be all good. Now let's go to the back. Oh, before we do that, one thing that's specific to the Prelude, which was kind of its party trick from the first to the last generation, from 78 through 2001, standard moon roof. Something that I don't think Scirocco offered, but with that said, it was kind of a baked in cool detail. This is an electric moon roof right here, pops up and down. And uh, again, standard equipment was one of the things that made the Prelude kind of a, a luxurious car and a sporty car all in one. Now here's the deck on the Prelude. This one's an SI, I for injection. The base car had a carbureted engine early on, but the SI also had this beautiful trunk spoiler, which absolutely is functional. There's a pass through here, air comes down, gets trapped, creates a bit of downforce on the tail. Here's the third tail light, which arrived, I believe in 86 or so, mandatory stuff to help safety. And inside the trunk, plenty of room. You know, we can see here the original Honda center caps. Now these are plastic, um, but this again has aluminum wheels on it. Let's see if there's one in here. 
Yeah, okay, there it is. There's one of these wheels. These are 14s, they're five and a half inches wide, but these are unidirectional, which is to say the lefts and the rights are specific to the car, and these little veins wanna face forward, and they do pump air. If you look at this right here, you'll see there's actually a 3D effect, a shelf and a vein, and those pump air at speed out of the wheel area to keep the, uh, the brakes cooler than they would be. These are four-wheel disc brakes, of course, and this is Consumer Guide's 1989 new car guide right here of course the chrysler tc which maybe was a competitor to the the prelude maybe a little upscale but with that said let's take a peek and see what they had to say about the prelude and there it is right there it says honda christened its third generation prelude last year again third gen and brings it back unchanged for 1989 the all-new sheet metal on a 6.5 inch longer body 230 additional pounds of curb weight and the world's first production four-wheel steering for wrs option were hallmarks of the 1988 redesign again this is the second year for four-wheel steer right here 1989 uh, it says here the four-wheel steer prelude beat Mazda's 626 Turbo four-wheel steer to the market by mere months. So again, Mazda was there also, but again, Honda's four-wheel steer is a mechanical system that links front and rear steering boxes. It steers the rear wheels a few degrees left or right, depending on the angle of the steering wheel. It is designed to improve handling and maneuverability. Speaking of which, let's poke our noses underneath this thing and look at it. Now this is not electric, it is not hydraulic, it's purely mechanical. And you can see right there the steering rack which is uh, located where a differential maybe go, and it has uh, steering links to each rear wheel. There's actually a, uh, a rod that comes from the front steering rack that's a drive shaft, basically, that feeds into that rack. There's a, uh, a, um, a gearbox inside of there, sort of an epicy epicyclic gear, if you will, that allows the rear wheels to steer left or right. But again, at low speeds, the rear wheels can steer up to five degrees uh, against the front tires, for better cornering, or not cornering, but parking. But at high speed, that universal gearbox in the back allows the rear wheels to steer with the front tires up to 1.5 degrees. And again, that allows the car to have less of a tail wagging factor. And that's about getting rid of yaw. And that was mostly useful on wet roads and on the racetrack too. But basically the four wheel steer was an extra cost option. About 30% of all Prelude buyers took it. And again, here we have it here on this 1980, nine prelude si four wheel steer so these preludes are getting to be pretty collectible uh, again four wheel disc brakes on all of these things sporty little cars strictly two doors obviously the prelude was sort of a, a smaller version of the uh the accord uh, but again a great little car in many many ways now this one has probably seen its last days it's a new england car and yeah it's got some rust but the entire uh, four-wheel steel system is still here maybe on a future video we'll ask the owners of burns and autorec put this thing on its side take a closer look at how that little drive shaft feeds steering inputs from the front rack to the rear rack on this four-wheel steer Honda Prelude. Well, that's the story of this vehicle. If you like this, this video and others, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Banks YouTube channel, ring the bell so you get updates on the next video, which is every single day. And keep in mind, there's 300 junkyard crawl videos right here on the channel playlist. You can watch and binge, they're all free. We'll be back tomorrow with more from Furnace and Auto Reckoning with the Junkyard Crawl.